Should the government rip up planning rules and build more homes? Give us a call 0207 862 and we'll speak to you in just a moment. So as we heard in the King's speech, the Prime Minister has made house building one of his priorities and he's outlined his plans for how he'll achieve it. It means that areas of the green belt deemed low quality will be redesignated as what they're calling grey belt and released for development and we can also expect curbs on local residents' ability to block developments. So in the papers today they are saying that communities will be able to debate how but not if new homes are being built or how they will be built. Do we think this is fair, Lowry? No, because it's going to impact some communities far more than others is the problem. So I live half the week in Whitstable in Kent and there's a place called Bleen, which is a village just outside Whitstable. And they are campaigning against, there are five and a half thousand people in this village um, and they're campaigning against a 1200 home development. Now that could mean, that's, that could be maybe to say two people per home, be more than that, but that's two and a half thousand people landed on this village. And they clearly, they've got like placards that well what's the point now because it's going to get waved through isn't it and I feel for them because although obviously if you brought up in the city as I was you know you think well why can't people live on top of each other that's how we all live what's the problem but actually when you go and actually live in there somewhere mm. that's much more rural you understand the connection people have to the environment irrespective of whether we, we believe as we know from the pandemic that green space is really important for people that we need green space for you know for, for the health of the planet um, it's about what Britain is as a country. It's about not just about having a lovely view, but it's about a connection to the land. And, and my concern is that you have a government who are urban, making decisions that are going to affect people in rural places, and they are going to have absolutely no say what happens. But new towns are nothing new, and that sounds like... But this that is not a new be, town. This is that, not a new but, town. But that's building just on... Or no, this is a village. A this is village. a village yeah. being subsumed by a massive new development, well, and the local probably people probably full of houses having... for second home. Probably full no, they're not. Houses. No, they're not. I am not so bleed. fed not up bleed. with this nimbyism. It's not in my backyard. You know, no, we can't have any new houses. We have housing crisis. Like we have a housing crisis. Yeah. You know, and we do because of mass no, immigration. No. Oh, here yes, we go. We here do. we go. It's the well, migrants' fault. Believe... It's the immigrants' fault. Our net migration. Not. Hang on. It's not just because. No, no, no. You spoke. Not just. You spoke. Not Let just. me speak. Labour want to build 1.5 million homes, and this is going to turbocharge our economy. You know, the, we need to get our economy moving. We need to, and the reason we do is we have investment from the private sector, which might surprise you, me saying that. But investment from the private sector. We need to build these homes somewhere, not only for the people who need homes, but also to turbocharge the economy. I brownfield sites. It's so divisive to say, oh, the green belt's going to be like you know cut up and, and, and built upon. That is not going to happen. It it's is divisive. happening already. It is divisive and it's inflammatory and the government have said that they're going to make sure, they're going to prioritise brownfield sites, they're going to look at sites that are not, they're not going to start, you know, building loads of homes on, you know, in the middle of the beautiful... They are! Middle, it's happening! Come out of London and have a look! But you then I do, it's and I do, and well, I have seen, not see what's and I've seen, and I do. And it is, it's, and the traditional about low quality land. Is it, is it only if it's kind of a site of, of, of unique scientific interest? I mean, low quality to whom? Low quality based on what? I think we all agree we have to have hands. I think the idea that you can't remove immigration from this is, a, is, is not true because if we have net migration, legal migration of over 600,000 last mm. year, obviously people come in, they need homes. There's another point I want to make, which is that we, there are two things going on here. One is that we need to stimulate the economy. Therefore, we're going to do stuff because it will create employment and create growth. So is it building houses to create employment and sort of almost create this kind of bubble of growth? Or is it to provide homes for people who are I'm homeless? Because the homes that they're building where I I live in Kent, they're not, you know, one, two bedroom flats. They're detached houses. Now, these are not these are not going to be socially rented. These are going to be, some are, quote, quote, affordable, but they're not affordable, really. These are developers the are deciding they want to build um, a detached home because they can sell them for large amounts of money. But you're not actually solving the house. Well, that, that will be part of the discussion as well, I'm sure, with residents. It's not, will there be houses? It's, no, there are houses. Hang on a second. What do you need yeah, no, to no, make no, this that's the easiest yeah. What's happening at the moment possible? is developers ideally have to give 30% of any development has to be affordable. And then what they do is they come back a year into development, this is happening at the moment, and say, actually, you know what? We can't afford to do 30%, so maybe we'll give you 20 And then you've got the local council saying, what do we do? They've already got spades in the ground. Do we stop them? Do we don't stop them? So developers, I would absolutely support the government ha taking more of a strategic 
uh, plan to what's built and where, but that's not what we're hearing. We're hearing get the stuff built process, as quick as possible. The planning process, no, that's not. It's not. It's not just you know throw things up. It and is have no disregard for what's for for for, for the local countryside or for the local residents. Residents will have be able to have a say on what things look like. But you can't deny, Larry, that the planning process, the red tape, the planning, it's been an absolute mess. Because local people have a is, say. No, because of this Tory nimbyism, which is, I don't want anything built in my back garden. I don't want anything built I'm near me. I don't want anything built. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And so it I is. Think and the planning, and the planning I process I think that's very condescending. Been... Can I give you another example of a place in Hertfordshire where they want to build on, it's privately owned land, but it, and it wasn't part of the local plan, but they wanted to build a huge new estate. The people who were, were, go, were, were opposed it were not Lord and Lady Muck. They were a load of people living in council houses who had always lived in somewhere that was semi-rural. They chose to live there. They didn't choose to live in the middle of a housing estate. Now, are they not to be allowed to have Where somewhere to walk to their dog? Well, I Where agree. are you going to put all these new homes then? You've acknowledged that we need new homes. You've acknowledged that we, we also need, need to control immigration. You know, what, can we not... Let's no, it's talk important. about housing. It's, we're I, talking about housing. Immigration okay, We are talking about housing. Where are you going to put... What's your solution? Where are you going to put all these new homes that we need? I think we need to build smaller. I think we can be much more effective in the use of land we have. I think we can talk about going up in cities. We don't need to all take virgin green belt land to build these massive estates with, with detached houses. That's not the solution. OK, let's go back to uh, the phones. Christine from the West Midlands, what's your view when it comes to building new homes? Do you think that actually ripping up the planning laws and not allowing locals to have a say is the way to go? I think they should demolish the town centres, the shopping centres that are not being used, oh. boarded up shops yeah. and marketplaces that are absolutely desolate. Mm. They should uh, demolish them and build the houses there where people need to be. OK, but isn't the problem then that you've got infrastructure in those sorts of towns already, but the problem is if you're going to build loads of new properties right in the centre of those towns, is the infrastructure that's there strong enough to deal with that? Isn't yeah, that something we need to get done? Yeah, there's plenty of schools, hospitals... Doctors, dentists, they've got them already. Yeah, but um, is, is there enough to deal with an influx of more people into that area? Because if, if the shopping centres are empty, as you say, and I think there are a lot of shopping centres that are pretty dismal at the moment, doesn't that mean that, you know, that nobody wants to be there? The people want to be there. They just don't want the shops where they are. The shops are in out-of-town areas now where the they, they drive to. So the, oh, yeah. the, 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 shop, the shop, shopping centres are not being used. Well, so demolish them and build the houses there. It's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't know how much you'd have to demolish them. Just make every shop a, a different unit, a different a small I, I, house. Certainly the argument is about sustainable development. And that's why, you know, it's a good idea to well, put houses where there's the already buses site. and trains and jobs and doctors. You have and, to have, yeah. you definitely yeah. have to have the transport network, the schools, but the But the, the complaints about the people that live in yeah. those areas already is that they are stretched. Already people can't do, get GP appointments. There aren't the yes. bus routes to, to support but, the people that live there. And so they'll be frustrated if more accommodation is built and the infrastructure isn't supported or yeah, more but schools. An another thing that's built. happening is developers are promising we'll build your primary school, we'll build your doctor's surgery, and you, to get get five, you get five years down the road, there's no primary school and there's no doctor's mm. surgery. Uh, Peter from Bedford, thank you, Christine, for that idea. Uh, Peter from Bedfordshire, what do you think? Should we be building on green belt slash grey belt? I think the, uh, the blonde lady made the right, just made the comment. Who? You, yeah, you should be putting the Emily? infrastructure. Hello? Uh, uh, did you say blonde yeah. lady? I'm struggling <laughs> to distinguish. <laughs> oh, <the> <laughs> we, we both look the and same. I, I, <laughs> but uh, uh, the one in the blue. Oh, oh <laughs> Lowry. OK. okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. But, but what it is, um, it's, very, it's very well building new homes and putting all these houses in, but they should be making the builders put the infrastructure well, in first. Uh, yeah, put and, the and, infrastructure and, in before they build the houses. I, and I think then, a lot of people would agree with you. I think Lowry brought up the point that if it isn't done beforehand, what you do is you get four four years down the line, all the properties are built, and they're like, well, there's no money for the schools and hospitals. But actually, you've got a point. If they have to build the infrastructure, well, it wouldn't be hospitals, it might be a GP yeah. surgery. If you have to build the infrastructure before the houses, then then it might be worth That would be read by Emily as more planning nightmares. I mean, I mean, developers are moaning that they actually have to cope with sewage. They might actually have to put some infrastructure in terms of sewage because that's the other big problem in large parts of the country is they're building new estates and not actually upgrading sufficiently the local sewage. 
so you've got more pollution. I mean, this is supposed to be sustainable. This is supposed to be a government that cares about the environment, and yet they want to... I mean, again, in Kent, you've got Prince Charles wants to build another Poundbury on agricultural okay, land. Okay, but if you do the thing where you go up... I mean, Glasgow is a, a great yeah. example of this. We did a... We, we have loads of old sort of... The, not the tenements, but the old high-rises. Yeah. They're all being demolished now because they just end up as slums. Yeah. I mean, they don't function at times. Although it surprised me then when I went to Manchester and they've all these very similar-looking yes. sort of towers Shiny but luxury, yes. luxury and they're all a million pounds yes. each and I think yes. does that work I don't know is that going to it's work about long are you concentrating poverty into those estates so actually the building is only part of the problem it's about who your tenants are whether they're managed effectively all that kind of stuff and also with the high rise I mean so obviously if you have families you can't it's very difficult for families to manage in high rise flats yes. you know, the children need more space again, you go, always you can, you go, you go, to, you go, to, you go to you go to Hong Kong and families live in, in, in high rises you go to, to uh, Milan is all high you, it's yeah, uh, European that, countries that's do live differently. Uh, we've just got a few messages. Lynn on Twitter says all the empty houses should be occupied. Derelict buildings should be repaired. Empty shops should no longer be converted. Industrial sites no longer used for uh, used first for new buildings, uh, then new buildings. Okay, Lynn, that's sort of like our our, our comment earlier. Um, thank you to Emily and Lowry for being such a great panel today. Thank you as always for your calls. Jeremy is going to be back at nine fifteen tomorrow morning.